Hello, friends. Tiffany Miller Lotz here. I have a new Times and Seasons message that the Lord um, delivered to me in a rather unique way that I felt was pretty important that I actually share that with you, considering the circumstances. But first, from Scott and I, we wanted to let our friends and family in Oklahoma know that we are praying for everyone that is still without power after Saturday night's storms. I know it's hot and muggy and miserable in Oklahoma this time of the year. And um, and from what I hear, it's a little difficult to get supplies as well. So praying for you guys. Uh, but I wanted to also refer to the last Times and Seasons video that we did because we'll be talking about that some and we have some examples of um, what that actually is playing out to look like. So in the last video, if you didn't see it, it was about three weeks ago, you can go back and look um, and regarding what the Lord was pouring out during Pentecost specifically. And and um, so it was this release of an interpretive gift. And we talked about how this isn't just interpretation of, say, uh, a message given in tongues, praying in the spirit. It wasn't simply or only that type of interpretation, but that it was interpretation of dreams, of visions, interpretation of, um, of the scripture, of understanding what the Lord is saying to us, and particularly in this time that we're in, through his word, um, an interpretation of what 1 Corinthians 2 talks about, that eye has not seen, ear has not heard, mind has not conceived, that which the Lord has prepared for those who love him, but that the Spirit has revealed it to us. And so interpretation of knowing what God's prepared for us, what he has for us to walk in and step into, and he, interpretation of his heart and mind, his will and purposes for the earth and for us. So those type of uh, gifts of interpretation is something the Lord is wanting to release to his body. So I had an experience this past week that um, kind of gave a unique example of how that gift of interpretation might manifest. So I was in a meeting and uh, there was um, actually a couple of people there that had shofars with them. And so we were all praying and one of the guys blew his shofar. And as he did, uh, it was a really unique sound. Now, I have been in just countless meetings where the shofar has been blown. And um, I can't say that I've ever questioned what it meant before i'm familiar with um with the old testament and different calls that the that is that are made but um i've never asked what that meant but for some reason the distinction um, and uniqueness of this particular call caused me to ask lord what tribe is that calling uh, because it just, it stood out to me as being very different. And instantly I heard that it was the tribe of Zebulun. And so as I thought about it, thought about who was in the room, et cetera, I'm like, okay, I understand that it makes sense. What well, later in the same meeting, someone else blew a shofar. And I instantly knew that that particular call was the call to the assembly to gather together. Um, and that is honestly the uh, the most common call that I hear when I'm in a meeting is the call to gather. Um, you often in meetings and corporate gatherings will also hear the call to war when the shofar is blown. But I had I had not specifically heard the tribal call, and in this case, the tribal call to Zebulun. Um, and so the uh, the the quickness, the um, instant understanding of what those calls were in that circumstance was part of, believe, part of this interpretive gift that the Lord's releasing. And um, and yeah, I just, um, I'm amazed how the Lord gives us, it's almost like he assigns us a question to ask just so he can give you the answer, so he can fulfill that 
And so that was that case. I've never asked before what that call meant, but uh, but instantly I understood what it was. So that is a, an example of the interpretive gift. It can show up and manifest in ways you might not necessarily expect. And so this um, story that I'm about to tell you also touches on the interpretive gift that God is releasing. But I don't know how things have been for you guys. I have been in a very active season, a pretty busy season here recently. And But it's amazing how God knows how to get your attention and how to call a time out, if you will, to have you listen to what he has to say. And in this case, we literally had a time out called. So I was on the phone with my friend and prayer partner that we have a weekly prayer call. And so as we are praying, I look up at the clock and I thought to myself, well, you know, that's strange. It, it really doesn't feel like it's that late. And I, I thought for sure it was earlier than that. So I looked down at my phone and it was, in fact, um, almost half an hour earlier. But the clock on the wall read 855. And I looked at it for a second and realized, wait, the clock isn't ticking. It stopped. It must have stopped the night before at 8.55 because it was only 8.30 or almost 8.30 in the morning. But I also had this thought to ask, Lord, is there something I need to know about these numbers? Is there something I need to know about 8.55? Are you trying to show me something? And instantly I heard, Yes, this is the season of the Pentecostal outpouring. It's just moments before the world shows up at the door of the church, drawn by the power and demonstrations of the Holy Spirit to receive the message of salvation so that many are added to the church. Now, if you uh, don't know the reference I'm talking about, this is from Acts chapter 2 at the original outpouring of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. When Peter gets up and he addresses the crowd, what does he say to them? He says, well, these men aren't drunk, as you suppose. No, it's only nine in the morning. So this was this was morning. It was um, the clock was set at 855 in the morning. So the Holy Spirit was telling me you're in a Pentecostal season. And this is just moments before the world shows up at the church of the door, drawn by the power and demonstrations of the Holy Spirit so that they can receive the message of the gospel so that many are added to the church. Now you can read through Acts chapter two and see all of that. And so that came to me very quickly. So I shared it with my prayer partner. We gave a just really brief, really quick prayer in agreement with that. And I just happened to glance back at the clock. And as soon as we had prayed in agreement, the clock began ticking again. And so I told her, um, okay, I guess we got the message because the clock's working again. Uh, but the clock is still half an hour ahead, correct? So I... I've just made um, a comment on Facebook, like truly, I wasn't sure, do I buy new batteries or do I just reset the clock? I mean, the clock seems to be working fine. Should I just reset it to its proper time and see if it keeps time after that? Well, I didn't get around to it um, until the next day. And so my husband's in the living room with me and I go and I get the stepladder and I'm explaining to him why I need to reset the clock or get batteries or something. So I go to get the clock down and I look at it and the clock is no longer half an hour ahead. It is at the exact correct time, exactly what my cell phone is reading which of course is updated by the cell towers. This is just an old analog clock. There is no Wi-Fi connection. There's no way for it to know what time it actually is without me setting it to that time. My husband hadn't reset it. I hadn't reset it, but yet it was telling perfect time. So I told Scott, well, okay, we will, um, 
we'll leave it be for now and I'll check it tomorrow at this time and we'll see if it's keeping time now. And so 24 hours later, it's still at the exact time that it's supposed to be. 36 hours later, still at the exact time. It's kept time since then. So <laughs> let's review. First of all, the clock stops at a particular time. God uh, gives me part of this interpretive gift to understand and hear from him quickly what that means. As soon as we agree with his word, the clock starts again. Then the clock catches up somehow, which is actually, it was ahead. So it's 11 and a half hours that it had to catch up to get to the right time. And then it stays at that time <laughs> indefinitely. We don't know. But at this moment, it's still going on. It's going on 48 hours and it's still at the right time. So God knows how to stop time and get our attention when necessary. But he spoke this word about us being in this Pentecost season right now and that we're just moments away from the church, the world showing up at the door of the church. So what does this mean for us? Like what, how do we, um, we can agree in prayer with that, but how do we bring our actions into alignment with that word of the Lord? So uh, number one is really that we need to, to also make notice because we're talking about this gift that the Lord's poured out at Pentecost this year. Well, when Peter gets up and he begins to address the crowd, it's only nine in the morning. These aren't drunk. No, this is actually what this is. Um, what God spoke of by the prophet Joel, that in the last days, I will pour out my spirit. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, men and women, I will pour out my spirit and they will prophesy, etc. And he begins to preach to them uh, from that point because this is what they're seeing. So he had to start there because they're seeing the demonstration and the power of the Holy Spirit. So he begins there, but then he goes to the message of salvation so that they can get saved. <clears throat> but he instantly had the gift of interpretation, what not, not necessarily of speaking in tongues of the scriptures. He instantly knew what these Old Testament scriptures, prophetic prophecies in scripture actually meant and how they were currently being fulfilled. That was an interpretive gift. So we have here a biblical account of God pouring out, not just a spirit, but pouring out the interpretive gift. So uh, be on the outlook for how God is bringing interpretive skills into your life. But it's important at this season that we don't abandon the process that we choose to stay in the upper room. We choose to continue to press in for those things of the spirit. You might say, I'm not seeing that in my world right now. I'm not seeing an outpouring of the spirit. I'm not seeing revival that's cropping up here and there. Um, I'm hearing rumors about it, but I'm not seeing it. But these 120 disciples, they had to stay and continue to engage until the spirit came. Now, Honestly, the Spirit's coming, and there were many who were not in that room at that moment that still benefited. You can jump in to what the Holy Spirit is doing at any time, no condemnation. However, there are many people that abandoned the process prior to that moment and regretted not getting to hear that roaring, rushing wind regretted not seeing the tongues of fire for themselves. They told the story secondhand because they weren't there because they abandoned the process. So what I'm saying is be the remnant, be the ones that continue to press in, that continue to pray through. Yes, you're, you'll be rewarded either way, but there's a special reward for those who get to experience that outpouring because they persisted in the um, in the pressing into the the promise of the father that he had already foretold was coming. So don't abandon the process, continue to press in, be the remnant. But also 
for leaders, for pastors, for prayer group leaders, for small um, house group leaders, uh, you need to hear that this is not, this isn't a time or a season to um, hold back on the demonstrations of the Holy Spirit in order to make the world comfortable or, or not to isolate them or not to ostracize them. When God is saying, this is the season when that the power and demonstration of the Holy Spirit is going to be exactly what draws the world to the door of the church. So don't hold back. This isn't a time to try and make the world comfortable. This is a time to allow the spirit to take center stage and do what he wants to do. And that is what's going to draw the world to us. So, so yes, especially for leaders, but even for um, you in the marketplace, you're just out there doing what, um, what you do every day. But if the Lord's telling you to pray for somebody, pray for somebody, don't worry about them um, feeling uncomfortable about that it's the power of the holy spirit and he comes where he's invited so we have to invite him and that's going to make people uncomfortable but it's also going to release the demonstration and power of the holy spirit um and another thing that we see in the book of acts in chapter two is you can't be afraid in this season to confront sin if peter hadn't laid out exactly what happened and confronted the crowd with the crucifixion of Jesus, that holy fear, the fear of the Lord that fell upon the crowd and caused them to cry out, what shall we do? That would not have come if he had held back and refused to confront the obvious. This is not a time to avoid confrontation. Now we don't are we're not trying to condemn people. We're just talking about actions. In this case, he simply said, This Jesus, this Christ, whom you crucified, God has now made him Lord. And that struck them with the fear of God. Now we know we've heard it so many times from so many places. We are in a season, in a year where the fear of the Lord is being released on the church and on the world. That fear of the Lord is very necessary for people to turn to him. But I want you to see true, honest, true fear of the Lord draws people to Jesus. It doesn't drive them away. The fear of the Lord draws them to him. So as they ask, what shall we do? And Peter said, "Be repent and be baptized, every one of you, and you'll receive this gift they came to the Lord and many were added to the church. And so many are going to be added. Many are being added at this moment. And um, we talked earlier about this shofar call. That was the call for the assembly to gather, the call to gather together on the Sunday at Shiloh Christian Ministries, where I attend church, there was a word released that this is a season to gather. And that's exactly true. If we're not gathering together, we don't have this upper room experience, this corporate experience of the Holy Spirit being released so that the, the world can be drawn. But there, we're gathering together in this season. And so many are being added. Now, I want I want to refer to uh, the last section of Acts chapter 2, where after these had been added to the church, what do we read about them? They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs, the powers and demonstrations of the Spirit, the wonders and signs performed by the apostles and all the believers were together. They were gathered and they had everything in common. They sold property, possessions to give to those who had need and they continued to meet together. They continued to gather in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes. Again, they gathered and they ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of the people. And the Lord continued them 
to add to their number daily those who are being saved. So look, I think I think we're seeing this very clear that this is leading us to the place where the great harvest can begin. So the gathering, though, requires preparation. So in this season that we're pressing in, we also need to be preparing. Now, if you have an evangelistic call on your life, uh, this is a really key time for you to prepare to really step fully into that call. Uh, if you are one that feels called to gather people in your home, to gather together with others for prayer, for worship, for uh, Bible study. All of these things are necessary. They're necessary to uh, see the release of the Holy Spirit in the first place so that this situation comes to pass so that we have the outpouring of the Holy Spirit and we have the world gathering at our door. But it's also necessary for the aftermath and the harvest that is to come. So this is a time to prepare prepare to gather, prepare to gather, gather to prepare and prepare to gather and continue to press into the things of the spirit, not just praying in the spirit that's vital and necessary, but all the things that the spirit's releasing for this day to equip us for what is about to come and take advantage of the Pentecost season that we're in. We're in a key season where we can, where there's a grace for us to receive from the Holy Spirit. That's what this interpretive gift has been about. That's what this crazy clock stopping thing has been about. It's just letting us know that heaven is very close to earth right now and that the Lord really wants to communicate with his people. It's um, And the only reason this stuff happens to me is so I can share it with you so that it can build faith so that we can all begin to walk in and step into the realities of the kingdom of God that he fully intends to be here. This is what he's prepared for us. This is the things that, that mind hasn't conceived, but that he has been revealing by his spirit. And we've been speaking it, we've been prophesying into it and we're seeing it and we will continue to see it in more and increasing measure. So I, I really just wanted to encourage you guys with that story. Um, and I hope it ties in some of what we talked about the last time with the interpretive gift and also gives you the ability to um, to see when that interpretive gift manifests in your life. You can say, oh, this is that. This is that. Just like Peter said, this is that, that, that the Lord prophesied. So bless you guys. Love you. And we'll see you in the next Times and Seasons video.